Well, I'm not far from the U Club right now with a fantastic golfer. You've been seeing her tear it up for years here at LSU, Ingrid Lindblad. Ingrid, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> Good seeing you. You too. Congratulations on all your success. You uh, recently won LSU's first individual title in 31 years. The last person to do that was a young lady then by the name of Christy Coates in 1991. What's been the key to your success lately? I think I've just been trying to like working on getting my game better, like minimizing mistakes. Uh, I've been working a lot of putting since last, like late fall and like over Christmas break and everything and just kept like polishing that. Yeah, uh, the final hole there. Mm -hmm. So you were, you were third place entering the final round. So yeah. you played three rounds of 18 holes, right? Mm -hmm. So you're down one stroke on the final hole. And uh, for you people out there, don't think that these ladies are laying up, okay? <laughs> so your second shot, a five wood from 220 yards mm -hmm. out. How about that? So you put it 38 feet from the, from the hole and then you sink an eagle to win the tournament. That's mm -hmm. pretty dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> last year I had an eagle putt on the last hole as well, but I missed it. But it wouldn't have helped if I made it because I still lost by three or something. Yeah. Well, tell me about the mentality there. I mean, tell me about the five wood, 220 yards away. Well, I had Garrett there, and it was like, I have nothing to lose. I asked how many shots it was down in third place and how many behind I was. And I was like, well, there's nothing to lose. I can just hit it, and if it goes in the water, it goes in the water. If it goes on the green, it goes on the green. Garrett being Garrett Runyon, he's the uh, the head coach of the uh, of the women's team. And uh, uh, this kind of ran through my mind yesterday thinking about doing, the, doing this interview. You don't have caddies. No. So you don't have somebody there to say, okay, hey, uh, the wind's in your face, let's go with a five iron instead of a mm -hmm. seven. Or the wind's nope. at your back, let's go with a seven. So your head coach is, is your caddy, basically. Yeah, yeah, but not, not all the time because he obviously has five players too. Yeah, so you, you, were, you, were, you had an individual title right here. But, yeah. But Sunday, for example, when you're playing Florida for the team title, there's, uh, like you said, there's golfers all over the course. Exactly. He can only be at one place at once. Yeah. <laughs> at, at, at once, right? How has he helped you uh, improve since he became the coach? You know, he always he like I have a swing coach at home, so I always keep up with my swing coach. But then he obviously knows like my tendencies. He knows, oh, you're getting a little cross at the top, or he can look at my putting stroke and be like, you know, you're starting to get back to this. So he's kind of more like. I mean, he keeps up with like what I'm doing, but he's not like dipping his nose and like, oh, mm -hmm. like do this instead, mm -hmm. unless he knows I've been working on something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and he's like, he's incredible in all ways, I feel. <laughs> you can talk to him about anything and, you know, if you need help on the golf course, you can just ask. So he's very helpful. Uh, so a 38 foot putt to win an SEC title. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, this is a huge thing. I, I don't know, like, for example, basketball players, they when they're shooting hoops by themselves at midnight or whatever, they're thinking about the game-winning shot with one second left or at the buzzer. I mean, uh, growing up, the, uh, those are the kind of things you visualize. Okay, here's a 38-foot putt to win a tournament. I mean, I think the <laughs> first time I did it was probably like when I knew I was playing the Junior Ryder Cup. I was practicing putting, and it was like, whoa, you know, what if this putt is to <laughs> win the Junior Ryder Cup? So yeah. sometimes I think about that, but not always. <laughs> right. It can be uh, maybe a little overwhelming. Yeah, I mean you don't want to get like too far ahead of yourself because mm -hmm. in golf, like there's a lot to play for, and you can just you can't just think about one shot because there's so many other shots that are important. Ingrid has now won a school record nine collegiate titles. She's won four of the last five spring events. Presently ranked number two in the world amateur golf rankings has your has your life changed at all with this recent success uh, have have you had more celebrity now that that's good or bad uh, do you have more people reaching out to you uh, do, do people recognize you on campus how has your life changed at yeah i mean the first day we got back we got back like late sunday night so i had to go to class the morning after and there's a soft i think she was a softball player and me and elsa we walked to her class and she said oh my god congrats and i was like i have no idea who you are but thank you <laughs> and then in the dining hall it was two basketball players and no idea who they were and they're like oh you're on the golf team like you won that c championship i was like yeah so i think 
You know, like people be like, wow, we have a golf team. People don't barely know that we have a golf team. So now I won the SEC. So I feel like we all get a little bit more like recognition on campus. Yeah, that's outstanding. Um, not only do you win the first title in 31 years, the team, LSU, the women, win their first SEC title in 30 years. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, th these are all things that took place before you were born in the, <laughs> in the early 90s there. Uh, how did that feel as a team? And it was a pretty dominant performance against Florida on that Sunday. Yeah, I mean, I finished on 13 that last day. And I was like, wow, I'm going to have to do the hard part now. And it was to watch. Because I think it's, it's harder to watch than to actually play it. Because when you play, you just focus on yourself. So whenever I had to watch it, I was like, wow. Like, I have to keep up with so many players. It's just not myself. <laughs> so and then when people started finishing up, we didn't really know where to go. Because it obviously can happen on 17, it can happen on 18, it can happen on a playoff hole. So we went to 18th green and Latana was finishing out and I think we all got very emotional because it's something we worked really hard for. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's kind of what you're talking about too, about uh, people saying, oh, we got a golf team. Um, it's, it's different than other sports in terms of let's go to a stadium, let's go to the PMAC. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're so spread out, I'm just wondering uh, you know, how do we get the message out to people that, hey, you can come out and watch these golf tournaments, but it is spread out over, you know, 18 holes. Um, this is a good <laughs> question. I feel like it's e when we have a home tournament, people know about it. But mm -hmm. this year we didn't have a home tournament. So whenever I have a home tournament, you know, people come out because if it's here at U Club, people, people know about it because they can't play the course. So then they can come out and watch instead. So. It's kind of like having like home games and away games, mm -hmm. but for us, it's just away games. Just away. You played your whole season on the road. Exactly. <laughs> so it's kind of hard. Like it's we barely have any people coming out like whenever we play somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. And I also think people think it's kind of boring to watch golf. <laughs> <laughs> this girl right here. Right? <laughs> awesome. I like honesty. Yeah. But you know, golf takes a long time. Like a college round takes at least five hours. And well, yeah, that's true. And it's a lot of walking and you hit 70 something shots. So it's like a track meet, like yeah. young men and women that are out. There's a walk. lot happening, but it's kind of slow. Yeah. It takes a while for it to, to all take place. Yeah. And there is a different dynamic there. You're out there on the course. You say there's not a whole lot of people there, but you do know this is being nationally televised and uh, I guess worldwide televised. I mean, did you have family back home that were able to watch this? On yeah, the so I called my mom after we finished the last day and she, I was like, oh my God, we won. And she's like, yeah, I, I know that. Like I watched the whole thing and I had no idea they were able to watch it. Cause usually when it's, I don't know, was it on SEC Network? SEC Network, yeah, I think so. And I had no idea how she was able to watch it, but she had watched the whole thing. She had <laughs> seen me hit every shot the whole, <laughs> the whole day. <laughs> what was the time? change or difference I should say over there. Uh, they're seven hours ahead so okay. we play well we'll play the, the morning the day. yeah, yeah. Morning. so so it was nighttime yeah 11. I mean it's afternoon and then afternoon kind of night so yeah. they're fine with it yeah yeah um, but besides your mom have you heard from other people back home that are proud of you and what you're accomplishing and everything yeah we have um, our media guy for the Swedish golf team he usually he keeps up with like you know the tour like juniors, he keeps up with everything in college and everything. So as soon as someone is doing something good at college, he usually posts it. So, you know, we have a lot of people keeping up and my home club is keeping up too. So that's fun. Awesome. Um, I, don't, I don't guess you go home very often, do you? Or? Mm -mm. I go home over Christmas and over summer. Okay. And I think I talked to you back uh, maybe a year ago, we we're on a Zoom. But going from Sweden to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, mm -hmm. So going from here to the moon? I mean, how, how different are those two places? Or are they alike? Um, the food is very different. Whenever I go home from here and like I eat at home, I'm like, this food doesn't taste anything. Because <laughs> they're more with spices here and stuff. So whenever I go home, I'm like, I need more spices on things. <laughs> but culturally, it's very different. Yeah. The whole people here, I would say people are a lot nicer. People at home are usually kind of rude. They're not very like open-minded. I shouldn't say that they're not very open-minded, but they're like, they're more, more talkative here. Yeah. They talk a lot more here than they do at home. So it's, it's a culture shock, I would say. Yeah, that's funny because my dad, who's a fluent 
Cajun French, could speak French and everything. He, well, he went to Sweden one time. He said the people, he the, he used the word congenial. They were very congenial when he visited, very friendly. Yeah. And, uh, and so uh, I guess it's where, depends where you go or, or yeah. what mood people are in, mm -hmm. right? just like me or you, right? Um, and then, so obviously you're on a team with a lot of talented golfers. You mentioned uh, Latanya Stone. Uh, Latana. La Latana, excuse me. Yeah. Latana Stone. <laughs> Uh, Kent Lowe had already corrected me on that and I screwed it up again. Sorry about that, kid. <laughs> Latana Stone. Uh, so she's going to go to her third Palmer Cup. She'll represent the U.S. in the annual matches this July, and that's uh, in, uh, in Switzerland. But tell me, about, uh, tell me about her and some of the other talented golfers on your, uh, on your team. I was roommates with Latana the first two years here, so I kind of got to know her a little better than just on, like, on the golf course. And I think she, she's been playing really good ever since Christmas break. She won two tournaments over Christmas break. And I'm just like, I get that she's always like in the shade of me. I don't think she doesn't get the attention that like she should get because she is really good. She played at Augusta. She finished, we both finished like second. And I feel like that really helped people like know that it's more than me on this team. Like Latana is really good too. So I think Augusta was really good for her. Mm -hmm. And that fe she finished her second, like, I, w I was just really proud of her. <laughs> Good deal. What about this team moving forward? You've won the SEC now, mm -hmm. um, moving into the NCAAs. Uh, you got to play a lot of golf, mm -hmm. right, to win a national title. Lots of rounds. Yeah. At the SECs, we're talking about not getting too far ahead of ourselves because that's what kind of what we did last year. Won the stroke play and then won the first match and then we lost the second match at SEC. So this year we were trying not, not to get like too far ahead of ourselves, just take like one round at a time and see what happens. So mm -hmm. I think we have to do that with regionals and nationals as well. Do you feel the talent on this team? If you reach your potential, something special can happen? I do think so. Um, that's kind of what happened at SECs. Finish second in the stroke play, but stroke play doesn't really matter in, in match play. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the same deal with, um, uh, what's it called, nationals that you have, it's stroke play first, but last year we saw that Stanford, they, they lost in the first round of match play, even though they won the stroke play. So you don't have to be, you just have to go and like get into match play. So you, you know, and then in match play, anything can happen. I'm always uh, amazed and impressed when I go watch real golfers like this young lady and, or go to the zoo and watch uh, the PGA Tour or whatnot. And, you know, people like me and my buddies will go out and sometimes we swing so hard, right? And it's, mm -hmm. a, and then we go watch somebody like you and everything is just so smooth <laughs> and, and still as smooth and almost sometimes look effortless, still driving the ball 300 yards and, and whatnot. Um, it's just the mechanics on it. It's all in mm -hmm. what you're taught. And it's all about uh, timing and, yeah. you know, getting the forces together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The forces, is that Star Wars or just? Uh, oh, just forces into the ground and <laughs> rotational force and everything. <laughs> Good deal. All right, uh, I won't keep this. I won't keep uh, Ingrid in the sun too much longer here. It, we're in late April here. We're not in July yet, but it is already heating up mm -hmm. here. So it is good. It's too. It's really hot today. It is. It's a little warm. We're yeah. getting into the the high 80s, I think. So I jotted down a few uh, things about Sweden. I don't have any fancy music. I don't have any graphics. I don't have anything special. But I just called this Swedish trivia. Okay. With Ingrid. All right. Uh, this is what I call a softball to start. What's the capital? <laughs> Stockholm. Stockholm. Uh, you, you say it a lot. It sounds like very good. Say it again. Stockholm. Stockholm. Okay, there you go. <laughs> awesome stuff. <laughs> What's the calling code in Sweden? Oh, like the... Like you, when, you, when you dial the number, you got to hit this before you... Oh, plus 46. Plus 46. Mm -hmm. There you go. Boom. She's two for two, folks. <laughs> Sweden is slightly larger. Then what U.S. state? Of all of our states. California. Boom. Mm -hmm. Three birdies for her so far. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, the largest, I guess that's our, is, is that's Texas a, well, what I'm When I try to compare Sweden to something in the U.S., I should compare it to California. Okay. So. Well, that's what it said on the website. There you go. <laughs> Slightly bigger than California. Okay. All right. Th this is a little difficult, I would guess. How many lakes are in Sweden, and which is the largest lake? The largest one is Vannen. Very good. Yeah. Um, I guess if you get it in a ballpark here. I mean, I have no idea, like, to be honest. Yeah. There are, I know Finland has probably the most lakes in the world. They have probably 10,000. 
Yeah, you, you're a hundred thousand in Sweden. A hundred thousand? Hundred thousand. Well, I didn't lakes. know that. Yep. That's a lot of lakes. We we usually just learn about the biggest ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say you're four for four because you got the, the biggest one right off the bat there. Uh, any idea what the population is of Sweden? A little bit over ten million. Very good. Mm -hmm. You didn't. You weren't cheating, were you? No. Nope. You didn't glance down. Okay. Ten thousand. Ten million. Yeah, we had ten million a couple of years ago. Ten million four hundred eighty-three thousand six hundred forty-seven. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ten and a half. Be six forty-eight when you go back home. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still a still a citizen. I still live in Sweden. Okay, so you still count on the number. Yep, I count. <laughs> okay, I'm a I'm a dummy. I'm a sports <laughs> dummy here talking. This girl's already much much more uh, much more than I am. What is the national holiday? What date is the national holiday in Sweden? And and in other like, countries they put. We say like over here. Oh, it's June six. That's oh. our like national day. Boom! There you go. So. Six June, mm -hmm. uh, 1983 was when it was established. Maybe uh, from 1916 to 1982, the date was celebrated as Swedish Flag Day. Yep. You weren't around for those, but no. But so <laughs> I recognize that. <laughs> what, what what do you what do you do on national holiday in Sweden? Um, everyone are off from school and work. Sometimes we put on. Um, so certain parts of the country have like a kind of a dress or like it's like a uniform so the girls like they're wearing dress and the guys are wearing like pants and a nicer shirt. Um, so different like parts of the country have different colors and stuff. Okay. And then there's one that's like from Sweden so it's blue and yellow obviously. And they usually put that on and they celebrate. Good. Did you say the guys wear muscle shirts? Is that what you said? Or no, like nicer shirts. Nicer shirts. Yeah. Okay. Got you. I, 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 I thought you might say mustard shirts. Too, no. But, uh, and she's trying to understand <laughs> don't, the don't, way I We talk. don't do that. <laughs> so uh, you got a little ahead of me uh, on, on one of the, uh, the questions. Oh. I might as well. It was number nine. So the national colors are? Blue and yellow. Blue and yellow. Same as our flag. Boom. What's the national anthem in Sweden? Du gamla, du fria. There you are. Yep. And that translates to? You thou, old, you old, you free. Kind of. Thou ancient, thou free. Yep. Yeah. Same. <laughs> Same deal. That right? sounded really ancient. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, what are the national symbols of Sweden? Three crowns. And there's one more. There's something else in there. Oh, it's like a lion. Hmm? Three crowns and a lion. There's a young lady who loves her country. <laughs> <laughs> Just mowing through these questions. Got them all right so far. All right. Uh, let's see. Did I skip one? I think this. Okay, this is the last one here. So, which Swedish pop group sang the smash hit Dancing Queen? <laughs> Roxette, ABBA, or Ace of Bass? ABBA. ABBA. <laughs> yep. Roxette is actually from my hometown. Are they? Yeah. You familiar with their music as well? Uh, Listen to My Heart. Yep. Uh, I know that one. Had a bunch of hits. Mm -hmm. ABBA is probably the biggest one. Abba is yeah. is the biggest. <laughs> yeah, you know any of the the other Abba songs? You take it take a chance on me. Mm -hmm. uh, Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia. Okay. Mm -hmm. See. Well, how old are you? Twenty two. Twenty two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Abba was hitting their prime in like the late seventies. So, <laughs> so you know you know the music. A couple of years before I was born. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit, a <laughs> little bit. Ace of Base. You remember their big hit? They had a few, but the sign. I saw the sign. No. Oh, sorry about that, Ace of Base. <laughs> Famous golfer doesn't know who you are here, but she knows Roxette and she knows that. But yeah, the lead singer of Roxette passed away recently, like in recent years. Oh, I didn't years. know that. Yeah, got canceled. What a bummer. I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping this up on. Uh, but uh, well, all right. Anything else you want to add uh, about uh, about your time here at LSU and and everything? Not really. Yeah. <laughs> just just keep making those parties, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Ingrid, thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Best of luck to you moving forward. Thank you. And, uh, you know, when you start winning LPGA events, come back and we'll we'll talk to you again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to make a lot of edits on this. <laughs> Several edits. It's okay.